Serbia stormed almost immediately out of the starting gate in this match because they knew that another three points would secure passage to the round of 16 with the game to spare against Brazil. And given the fact that Switzerland had picked a point off Brazil a few days ago, Switzerland playing Costa Rica in their final game in this group, uh, a Costa Rica team that's already eliminated now. Granted, a Costa Rica side that will most likely seek some sort of compensation. You would think the Ticos don't want to finish with zero points in this tournament, but still, uh, even though Serbia had won their opening match in Group E, playing against Group E favorites and a team that many would peg as tournament favorites, myself included, I still consider Brazil the best team uh, when they are on full mode. Um, Serbia really... This was most likely a, a necessary victory today because they don't want to go into that final match against Brazil with an air of uncertainty, particularly when Switzerland is playing the worst opponent in the group. Um, and for most of the first half, Serbia did an excellent job of containing Switzerland into their own, not just their own half of the field, but in their own box. And I thought this was impressive because I think if you look at it man per man on an individual player's uh, basis, Switzerland is by far and away the better squad. Uh, the individual talents on this team is, I think, unparalleled maybe by only a handful of other sides in this tournament. And it wasn't really until around the, I want to say, 27th or 29th minute where Switzerland had their real their best opportunity to find an equalizer when Jemaili played that through ball on goal for Seferovic. And I know that a lot of Swiss fans don't like Harris Seferovic. They consider him sort of a, a ham in front of goal. He does. He's not really known for his, uh, his, his finishes and his prowess in front of net. Um, but Switzerland were, were chasing this game. And I think it was around the ninth or 10 minute mark where Serbia took the lead threw a cross in the box from Tadic that met the head of Mitrovic, who glided at home. Silky smooth, wonderful goal. And Serbia kept pressing forward. They wanted to put this game away early. They were looking for a second. They damn near almost got a second. Switzerland were, in my opinion, they were fortunate to, to take it to the half down 1-0. And then the narrative completely switched on its head like a dime. We started seeing Jordan Shakiri, who I'm going to heap a lot of praise on later in this vid. Just hold on. Start to get more time on the ball, and he had a couple of decent chances. One that was cleared out by the Serbian back line, but which then fell to the feet of Granit Xhaka, who blasted a rocket from outside the box that Stojkovic, the Serbian goalkeeper, could, have, could do absolutely nothing about. And that gave Switzerland the 1-1 one -one equalizer. And it was just a few minutes later... That Shakiri, being as bold and daring as he is, had that curled shot uh, uh, from the right hand side that just just touched the post. Um, and this was just minutes after they scored the equalizer. This is this would have given uh, Switzerland the lead. So we had Shakiri in the space of about ten minutes with two clear cut chances. One of which was cleared out that went to his teammate who poked in the back of the net and one of which that was just barely clipped off the post. Around the 70th minute mark, Switzerland had completely uh, shifted the tide of this game, and from then on out, it was a, a, slow, a really long last 20 minutes for Serbia, one that was filled with a lot of defensive um, turbulence because... They could barely keep Switzerland away. And we saw Switzerland pressing them, especially whenever they would recover the ball back and they would proceed forward on the counter. Uh, the link-up play between Ricardo Rodriguez, Gavranovic, who himself had a decent opportunity on goal, but I think he hit the outside net. And Jordan Shakiri was the most, I want to say fluid, but yet also adaptable sequence of passing I've seen so far in the tournament. The, the liquidity of which Switzerland's high press in their passing 
when they were searching for the winner, especially when Zakiri in the last 20, 25 minutes of this match, looking like he was a man on a mission, seizing the reins of this uh of of this of this match upon his shoulders and doing what he did. One of the best, one of the most brilliant individual performances, I think, in the World Cup so far. And I mentioned that on Twitter because for the last 15, 20 minutes of this match, Jordan Shakiri played like a man possessed. And he won this game for Switzerland, not just not just in the stoppage time goal that he scored on the counter that he slipped past Stojkovic, but also because I thought that he was the one on the field who took the most stringent initiative to go about and search for the winner, whereas Serbia, they really had no choice but to just keep Switzerland at bay because the Swiss had found their rhythm. And as far as the passing game goes for Switzerland, that I just mentioned before, this was some of the be- top-class uh, uh, passing that I've seen since the Mexico-Germany game last week. Uh, really impressed with the Switzerland team. I think that you look at everybody else in this tournament, nobody has really impressed yet. France, mm, Argentina, get out of here. Germany, mm, I mean, Brazil, they were better today against Costa Rica. But Switzerland look like they can go toe-to-toe with anybody they come up against in this tournament. And they may be the central dark horse pick uh, thus far after, uh, after two match days. I think the Switzerland team can go far. If they come out of this group, they face maybe Group F winners right now, current moment, still early, looking like Mexico. Um, They can win that, get to the quarterfinals, conceivably a quarterfinals against England or Belgium, and it's tough, but this is a Swiss team that look like they are capable of knocking off a giant. And just the way that Jordan Shakiri came up in this game, for my money... It's better than it's better than the goal that he that he made against uh, the bicycle kick that he made against uh, Poland in the round in the round of sixteen of Euro twenty sixteen. Um, not just the spark that he had in the final third, but I think his leadership today on the pitch was what really separated Switzerland toward the end of the game with Serbia and. It wasn't so much that Serbia was very much on the back foot in the second half, but it was that Switzerland really wanted to win this game. And Ricardo Rodriguez, I thought, did an excellent job of winning Switzerland those set pieces way down in the Serbian end of the field. He's winning tons of corners from them, free kicks, throw-ins, and ultimately uh, it played a handy role in Switzerland going on to win this game. Now, some people comment that maybe the whole politics thing of this match with, with Shakiri celebrating with the Albanian eagle on his chest, like, it's, you know, this maybe this game had political significance as well. Maybe. I mean, we saw this in Euro 2016 qualifying the, when Albania and Serbia were in the same group. There was controversy there with drones and players, you know, fighting. Um Especially the fact that Switzerland, several of their players are ethnic Albanian Kosovar nationals. So, you know, and the whole, yeah. yeah. But that probably did play a part, unfortunately. But at the end of the day, you, you can't say Switzerland did not deserve this win. And that's something that I've noticed about Switzerland. Is this character. Because I remember that... They faced a similar situation in the 2014 World Cup where they had to come from behind at halftime against uh, Ecuador when they were 1-0 down. This is a World Cup held in South America. And then, I believe in Euro 2016 qualifying, they came from 2-0 down against Slovenia to win 3-2. That seems to be a thing about Switzerland. They know how to gradually find their place into a game and then go on to to squeeze out a result. And here they got the full three points. So, yet again, coming from behind in a major tournament to win. And they are the first team in the 2018 World Cup to come from behind to win a game. So, well done, Switzerland. Hauptschweiz, Allee les Suisses, 
uh, Forza Svisera. Uh, and for Serbia, they probably need to get some type of result against Brazil. Because unless Costa Rica defeats Switzerland, it's looking sort of grim for Serbia. Because, you know, if um, Switzerland ties with Costa Rica, they have five points. Serbia ties with uh, Brazil, they go to four points, it's not enough. So Serbia has to either beat Brazil or hope Costa Rica is feeling really inspired and beats Switzerland and have and Serbia has a uh, better goal difference, differential.